Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with Unit 3, Section 3. Uh, we're going to be talking about parallel and perpendicular slopes. This actually should be a bit of a review as you talked about this in Algebra 1. Um, so we have two types of lines that we're going to be talking about, parallel lines, perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are when lines do not intersect. Um, the mathematical symbol for parallel is sort of just the shorthand, is sort of just two lines. Sometimes they may even be straighter like that, parallel. Um, so the slopes of parallel lines are the same. So if two slopes are the same, um, then we can say the lines are parallel. Perpendicular symbolically looks like this. Um, perpendicular is when two lines intersect and meet at a 90 degree angle. So the slopes of perpendicular lines <coughs> are considered opposite reciprocals. So what exactly does opposite reciprocal mean? Well, essentially means that the fraction flips around and the sign of the number changes. So it either goes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Um, so looking at these quick examples here, if I give you a slope, m, if you remember from Algebra 1, we usually looked at y equals mx plus b and m was your slope. <clears throat> so we're going to determine what the parallel slope and what the perpendicular slopes of each of these things are. Uh, so this one here is negative 3 fifths. So the parallel slope, if my slope is negative 3 fifths, the parallel slope would also be negative 3 fifths because parallel slopes are the same. So again, when I say same, I mean that they are equal to each other. Um, the perpendicular slope, I flip the fraction and change the sign. So if it's 3 over 5, now it becomes 5 over 3. And change the sign, it was negative, now it's positive. Um, the trick with perpendicular slopes is that these should multiply um, to equal negative 1. So if you multiply the two numbers together, it should equal negative 1. Um, this is a special case problem. If m equals 0, the slope equals 0, the parallel slope is also 0. Again, parallel slopes are the same. Um, the perpendicular slope, though, is undefined. So if you remember what a horizontal slope looked like, a horizontal slope um, is when it's equal to 0, and then what's perpendicular to a horizontal line is a vertical line. Um, and vertical lines have a slope that is undefined. So the next one, 1 half, the parallel slope would be 1 half. Perpendicular slope, we flip the fraction and change the sign. It was a positive number, now it's a negative number. Um, so we actually don't leave it as negative uh, 2 over 1. We simplify that. Negative 2 over 1 is just negative 2. <coughs> and then the last one here, m is equal to negative 6. So the parallel slope is the same, negative 6. Perpendicular, perpendicular slope. Uh, we flip that around into a fraction, so negative 6 is the same as uh, negative 6 over 1. So when I flip that around into a fraction, it's 1 over 6. Change the sign, now it's positive. Next problems are a little bit more involved. Um, given a set of points of two separate lines, determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Um, so in order to do these, we need to remember our slope formula. If you remember, slope is rise over run. Um, rise over run. It's the change in y over the change in x. Um, so for this, I'm going to kind of break this up into two uh, parts. We're going to do line one slope, and then we'll do line two slope, and then we just compare them. So for parallel slopes, we're looking for equal. Uh, for perpendicular, we're look, looking for that opposite reciprocal, and then neither just means if none of those situations happen. Um, so for this one here, we do negative 1 minus 2. So again, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So because it's minus a negative, that means we have to add here. So the slope here ends up being negative 3 over 2. So now we're going to do the slope of line 2. So line 2, I would do 3 minus negative 1. Whoops, that's a plus. Um, and then 2 minus negative 4, which gives me 4 over 6. Now, seemingly, these look like very different numbers, but anytime you have a fraction, you should always put it in its simplest form. 4 over 6 as a simplified fraction, each of those is divisible by 2, is 2 thirds. And so now if I compare 2 thirds and negative 3 over 2, <coughs> 
those are opposite reciprocals um, and so therefore I can say that these lines are perpendicular and so we're just gonna kinda go through and check these other ones out whoops don't mean to do that um, so for the next one line 1 is negative 3 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 1 which simplifies to negative 5 over 3 and then line 2 is uh, negative 2 minus 3 divided by negative 1 minus negative 4 which is plus 4 which is also negative 5 over 3 so since these things are the same negative 5 over 3 negative 5 over 3 I would say that these lines are parallel and then our last one here doing line 1 uh, line 1 is 2 minus negative 5 divided by 6 minus 9 so that gives me 7 over negative 3 and then line 2 here <clears throat> uh, we have 1 minus negative 2 which is 1 plus 2 divided by 4 minus 11 so these look like they might be opposite reciprocals. The fractions are flipped around, 7 over negative 3, 3 over negative 7. <coughs> but realistically, what you need to remember is that this negative can kind of go anywhere. That negative 3 over 7 is the same here as negative 3 over 7, and it's also the same as 3 over negative 7. So the negative, where it is, doesn't really matter. So these are not opposite reciprocals. They are just reciprocals. So this is actually the situation where we would say it's neither. All right, two more quick little problems here. So uh, the first problem is line M passes through negative 2, 4, and negative 5, 1. Um, and so I kind of wrote down a step-by-step -step process on how to do these. So feel free to write that in your notes. Uh, step one says to plot the point and draw the first line. Um, so we're going to plot these two points and draw line M. So negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Positive 1. Okay, so then let me get my line tool here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's step one. Plot the line. So there we go. We have our line. Step two is to count the slope. So as you uh, recall in the notes, I said that slope was rise over run. So if I give you a picture of a graph to count the slope, you just say, how many did you go up? How many did you go over? One, two, three. One, two, three. So I went up three and right three. Um, that simplifies 3 over 3 to just 1. So my slope of this line is 1. So now the rest of the problem says graph the line parallel to M, so parallel is a key word here, uh, that passes through the point 0, 2. So now we have a new point, that's step 3, plot this new point, 0, 2. And then it says follow the, and I just didn't have the symbols here, Follow the parallel or perpendicular rule for slope. So this problem can either say parallel or it can say perpendicular. So since we're doing parallel, we need to remember that the slope is going to be the same. So in other words, slope has to equal 1. And so now from this new point, what we're going to do is mimic that slope. Slope of 1 just means go up 1 and right 1. And you can continue to do that for as many points as you want and we want to graph that new line and so here's sort of what that line would look like and so these would be my two parallel lines so they are both kind of going through uh, that point parallel have the same slope all right last little bit here has to do with a distance a perpendicular distance so it says find the distance between the point and the line. The shortest distance from a point to a line is always perpendicular. So the idea here is that we want to connect this dot to this line 
but we want to do it so that it's a perpendicular line. So I don't just want to do this because that's not a 90 degree angle. Um, and so we need to figure out sort of how to connect it. So here are your steps for this. Count the slope of the line. So here's my line. So you just find two points on the line and count the slope. I go up one and right three. <clears throat> so my slope is one over three. So now, because we're doing a distance, distance is always perpendicular, now we want to find the slope perpendicular to this. So flip the fraction and change the sign. So negative three over one, which means I would go down three and write one. <clears throat> now we're going to connect the point to the line using this slope. So down three, one, two, three, and to the right one. So this point right here, and I'll actually use a different color to kind of help distinguish it. Um, and so we connect that. That's a bad line. Okay. Um, and so we just connect these here. And so the idea is now we can either use the distance formula with this point and this point. So in case you forgot, distance formula. Um, is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Um, you can either use the distance formula or I know some of you like to do the Pythagorean theorem thing. So when you're doing the Pythagorean theorem thing, you kind of almost ignore the line. Pretend like the line was not there and then you can draw your triangle from these points. So it's actually a pretty small triangle here. Um, and then remember, you count the horizontal distance, one, count the vertical distance, one, two, three, and then we can do Pythagorean theorem. So I'll do the Pythagorean theorem, and we're solving for x. So that would be one squared plus three squared equals x squared. So when I simplify that, that's nine, that's one, uh, that's ten. And so to solve for x, we square root each side. And we get that x, or the distance there, is about 3.2. All right, that is your notes on parallel perpendicular slope. So as a reminder, parallel slope, slope is the same. Perpendicular slope, slopes are opposite reciprocals. I know it, and now you know it. Thank you for watching.